all right guys how you doing we are sitting next to a train xv variable speed system now everybody has their opinions on variable speed and inverters and things like that but uh we are a train dealer we put in train we don't put in the aux box but we put in train equipment we put in about 20 of these xv systems a year um Sometimes a few more, sometimes a few less, but since they since they put them out, we uh, they, they were 80s, 90s. They had older models, versions of these things, and they, they finally came back out with these several years ago. And to be honest, this has been a very, uh, very good machine. I mean, we haven't had any issues with it um, in general with the XV systems. Um, as far as the drive goes, uh, I think in the seven years we've been putting these things in, maybe eight, I can't remember how long they've been out, but um, this was a 2019 install on this one. It's three years, four, going on four years old. Um, you remember the first house one of our project managers went to, the lady bought, bought four of them on our big house um, between uh, Raleigh and Fuquay. Um, put four of them on our house, replaced all four systems, and haven't had any other than a couple of leaking evaporator coils. Those units have been running fine, but we put in about 20 a year. Um, out of all those systems, I mean, we probably put in, we'll just say probably 200 of these or more. Um, we've only had four drives actually go bad in them, and that thing's expensive. These things get out of warranty, that drive will be about $2,800 to replace. Um, outside of warranty, but um, we only had four drives go bad because we keep track of those actually, these things and repairs done on them. Um, four drives out of maybe 240 or so systems. Um, two of those were little frogs that got in there. If you watch one of my shorts, snake, snakes on a train. A snake, a little baby snake, got in behind one. So those were all three shorted out by uh, in, uh, uh, frogs and a snake. So it wasn't anything to do with the equipment. The only one that was actually bad was the uh, one of our project managers was given one by train because he sold so many one year. He sold like 50 in that first or second year. I can't remember, but uh, he <clears throat> got one for free. And it came with a bad driver out of the box. So we kind of thought that was funny. Told him that we get, he got a remanufactured unit. But um, we have had a handful, maybe six or seven compressor failures in these. Um, and I, th I think that's what this is going to be. I'm following up behind the after hours guy from the weekend. Um, homeowner complained it wasn't working. It was rattling, making a lot of noise. And, and it did the same thing when he was here. So... Um, I'm hooked up to it. We've got 219 PSI. It's warm outside today. I got the umbrella up to block the sun because it would be right across here in front of my in front of my eyes. But anyway, that is the train. You go into your CDA here and you can run test cycles and check alert history, configuration, uh, run your test defrost, uh, run your fan test, things like that. But uh, that is the basically the main control in this thing and we've got you know everybody talks about bosch don't see bosch around here i think steve rarden has put a few of them in around here steve's office is actually right up the road about two miles from where our, our shop is i actually used to work with steve at a i won't name the company but it was a large national service company here in the triangle uh he was an installer and i was a service technician um so He's put in some Bosch's, and I think he stopped because I think the first several he put in, he was just having control board failures left and right. And they talk about humidity with the Bosch because it doesn't have a communicating air handler that it can ramp the airflow with. This, combined with the TAM-9 or the TAM-8 at that time, um, this board, uh, this control drive controls everything. It, 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 it controls airflow inside. So this is telling everything else what to do. Um, so this thing's running at 40%, it's running that airflow in there at 40%. So the airflow is always matching your capacity and your compressor speed. And that's the key to, 
keeping that humidity under control. Uh, you get an air handler that doesn't communicate, and this thing's running, your outdoor Bosch is running 45%, 50% capacity, your airflow is running 100, you know, you're not removing, your, your, your capacity is not removing enough moisture based on what that blower is sucking in through the doors and the windows and the cracks in the house, and your humidity is actually going to go up. It's kind of the same thing as leaving your fan in on all the time on your air handler or your furnace blower running 24 hours a day. You're not conditioning the air unless the condenser is running. So that blower running all the time, you're just sucking humidity and right back into your house and your humidity is actually going to go up. So, uh, but this has been a very nice unit. Uh, I've enjoyed them that we don't have a lot of problems other than the typical, you get a sensor go bad on one or something like that. I don't think I've ever had a stepper motor go bad or anything like that, but it is connected to the TAM air handler. And everybody knows about the refrigerant leaks that these coils are, are having on a lot of this equipment actually, not just train, but um so uh, with that said this outdoor piece of equipment is, which is what really makes up the xv is uh has been a good unit so i'm gonna run a drive test on this thing real quick and it won't take but a minute to confirm that compressor so we're going to go over here and you're going to hold your buttons down at the top up and down for about 10 seconds and it's not really easy to see that screen but you see that's going to say monitor menu and I'm going to scroll over. There's where you are. No active alerts right now. It does have an alert history, which I've already checked that. Basically, high pressure cutouts, overcurrent cutout, and um, it's a hard lockout, basically. And then the configuration menu, when you go to run, check things, there's your control menu where you control things. And the first thing that pumps, pops up is run drive test. So we're going to run the drive test. This drive is going to start energizing the stepper motor open and closed. And then it's going to try to run that compressor and see what happens. And I think we're going to be able to hear it. We've already done it once. So enter. Testing. And then we're going to watch our amp draw. And listen to the noise when this thing tries to start the compressor. So it's doing a circuit test right now. Checking sensors. Here comes the compressor. It tried to start it then. You hear it? Drive test fails. So that compressor, when it starts, it tries to shake. So it's just a while ago it was shaking even worse. So pretty sure that's what it is. It's, it's, the, every compressor I've seen in one of these, the six or seven that, that we found, has done the exact same thing. So we're going to get a compressor for it. But anyway, I just thought I'd let you guys see the the XV. If you're not familiar with it, you got two tabs under here where you check your DC voltage. If you get to just check that DC voltage, it tells you when you turn the power off to this thing, let it discharge, because this is running about 380 to 400 volts DC. So you want to give it time to discharge and you've got two test points under here where you can check your voltage and uh, confirm that it's discharged before you start working on this thing. But it's a, uh, yeah, see now it's going through a reset and then it'll go back to the beginning of that menu. But it, the drive test failed and it fails as soon as it tries to start the compressor. So I'm going to do a little check and I'm going to come in here and on the compressor out and see what we've got. Um, but it's pretty much a bad compressor. Just thought you guys might like this, like to see it. Quick little video. But um, you guys enjoy your day. Get you one of these umbrellas, man. It keeps the sun out of your eyes. All right, guys. I am back at that XV system from yesterday afternoon. It was showing a hardware failure fault here, drive fault, which the book will tell you, replace the drive. But it only did it like every other. It did it twice in a row. One time before. It was one time the compressor tried to start. It was shaking. And it said it passed. So is it a compressor problem? Is it a drive problem? I called tech support. And uh, to be honest, they were 50-50 on it. They felt maybe it was could be either one. If it's the inrush current back feeding to the drive causing that fault uh, in the compressor, then it's the compressor. Or it could be the drive. So... We keep a training system set up in our shop 
I went and took the drive out of it. This is the one that came out of this system temporarily. And I'm gonna put this one in here and we're gonna see if it works. If it works, then we're gonna get the drive. If it doesn't, it's doing the same thing, then we know we've got a compressor problem. But the compressor winding's on out fine. Uh, when you run that drive test, the compressor never actually comes on and runs. This thing just goes and kind of kicks it in a little bit and gets a response. Um, just kind of testing the circuits on it. And it can come back with open windings, shorted compressor, the drive hardware, fault. Uh, there's a couple of other ones that'll detect in the drive test and then the flow chart in the book. We'll follow through that. But anyway, I went ahead and swapped this thing out real quick and uh, we're going to power it back up and run that test again. But uh, when you're replacing one of these, you've got your heat sink here where your refrigerant lines actually on this unit come up through here and they kind of help keep this thing cool because this thing can get kind of hot, but it pulls some of the heat out. So it's, it acts as a heat sink on that and helps kind of keep this drive cool. So when you're replacing this thing, you've got this six screws on three on each side that hold it in. And then you're gonna take off this plate and then you're gonna slide these refrigerant lines back. They'll come back about, you know, about, about that far back where you can slide this thing out of here and then you'll lift it and raise it out. Obviously unplug everything from it. Uh, when you turn the power off, you have to let this thing sit for about two minutes. Um, like I said, this thing gets up to 400 volts DC. So you want to let this thing discharge before you start unplugging and taking anything off. That usually takes about two minutes. And there's two test points down here on the bottom. So anyway, we are in standby mode. And uh, let me grab my meter again. And like I said, on the earlier part of this video, uh, you were noticing this. I didn't really explain it. You see you got 1.8 amps on this when it's just sitting here not running in standby. The windings on these compressors also act as the crankcase heater. So it got down a little chilly last night. It's gonna be back up in the 70s today, but it got a little chilly last night. So this thing's not obviously been running because it's down right now. But that 1.8 amps is gonna be your draw on your windings in the compressor. This unit uses the windings in the compressor as a crankcase heater. So it gets below certain temperatures, that compressor gets cold. This thing will initiate that heat for the compressor and it uses the windings to do that. So thought I would explain to you why yesterday or the earlier part of this video, you were seeing the 1.8 amps and nothing was running, that's why the compressor windings act as a crankcase heater. So let's run this test real quick and see what we get. All right. I hope it's the drive because if it is, then I can leave this one in here for my training unit and get the system running until we can get the new one. Uh, they may have one in stock, I don't know, but it, at least that gives me an option to at least keep some air conditioning running here. If it's the compressor, then it's just going to take a day or two to get back and put it in. So let's run the drive test and see what happens. And I'm getting the same fault, drive hardware fault. And I know this is this drives good. So sounds like it was trying to kick that compressor and it just didn't, didn't want to respond. So we're going to exit it 
and run it one more time because I like to see it twice. I'm gonna have to wait for that to reset. But it looks to me like, yeah, we're gonna have a compressor problem, which is unfortunate. At least if it was the drive, I could leave this one in here and get her some temporary air conditioning, get this thing running until we can get the new drive. But it's going to look like a compressor in this situation. So um, you just wanna try this because they really don't want you pulling refrigerant out of these systems unless you absolutely have to. Um, this thing actually does have a pump down mode from the thermostat if you were gonna do the coil or uh, something in the refrigerant lines on the inside, you could actually, this thing will run a pump down sequence. And then you'll come out here and it'll give you a countdown on here and tell you when to start shutting your valves, read your pressures, and then you could eventually lock it, shut it down, it'll shut off. So, um, but unfortunately you can't pump it down and replace the compressor, you gotta get the whole thing. Um, so, it is what it is guys. We're gonna run this test one more time and it looks like we are going to get the same result. Yep. So all right, we know the answer. It was the compressor. Alright guys, we're looking at four to six weeks at best they're telling us to get that compressor um, and she can't even guarantee that it's not showing any in our region for one of those compressors for that variable speed system um, once they put the order in it'll go nationwide and if they can get us one sooner but we're looking at about uh, she said end of March best case scenario so we're going to put in an ERO order through our representative at the local train distributor here. The regional distribution center is, is three miles from where we are. Um, and like I said, we do a lot of business with train, have been for what about 11 or 12 years now. So um, <clears throat> usually they can help us out with stuff like that. Uh, this has got a parts and labor warranty on it extended through train. So it's not going to cost the homeowner anything. It's just disappointing that it takes that long. You know, they're... The assembly line seems to be moving. I think we're still getting XV systems available for, for install, but um, if they have the compressors for that, they should definitely have compressors for their existing customers that have already purchased their equipment, in my opinion. But uh, we'll put an emergency uh, ERO order in for, for that. And um, we've done it before uh, with, with other pieces of equipment, not necessarily the variable speed, but uh, and usually we've either gotten the part or we've gotten the new uh, outdoor unit or a new air handler, um, one or the other. So it's their part warranty. If they can't cover it with the part, then uh, you got to get the equipment. And uh, they've done that for us a couple of times. So I think it'll turn out okay. It's just a process, but it's kind of disappointing. I don't understand why you you have, you know, parts available to assemble the, the systems, but having one available for someone that needs one that's already purchased your unit, had it installed on their house, um, is not, I just kind of, I don't know. Uh, it's not my wheelhouse, it's not what I do, but it seems like you would you would have some stuff available. I mean, I know everything's still backed up from COVID. I understand all that. You don't need to throw that in there. But things are starting to pick up, but I mean, it's, you know, a system like that should have some available parts and that's why I wanted to try the drive because I knew uh, already the issue with the compressor and, and the back order on that so I was hoping it was the drive so I could at least get the thing running temporarily um, we can get one of those quicker and we can get a compressor to figure that anyway guys like subscribe thanks for watching and uh, trying to get to a thousand subscribers tell your friends Check out some videos, subscribe, um, suggestions, things like that. Open-minded. And we'll see you on the next one. You guys stay safe and have a good day. You got to love it.